Hello everyone, this is Tim, and I just recently bombarded my uh, subscribers with a bunch of 5th edition Dungeon Dragons cleric domains. And the main reason I went through all that process to do that was to get a uh, sort of canvas ready to make my own Pantheon. I wanted to make a new Pantheon for 5th edition, uh, maybe even a new setting, I'm not sure. But I think I'm going to try to keep it um, a little standoffish from setting, try to keep it as... Uh, a pantheon that someone maybe could take and put into their own setting. So I'm trying to keep things vague or, you know, paint with broad brushes so it's not so involved and detailed that they can't use it in their own campaign. And the way that I started off was I just made a simple table. The uh, player's handbook has seven domains and I came up with 23. So that means that there are 30 different domains that you can stat out your gods with. You know, describe your gods with. So I just made a little table from 1 to 30 and the idea I had was that since the 5th edition gods are listed with only having uh, two domains, which kind of feels limiting to me, but I'm going to kind of go with that same uh, same way of describing my gods as well. You know, if I'm going to make a 5th edition campaign pantheon, I might as well make it more in line with how they want to do things. Uh, just to see, you know, that way maybe someone can uh, use it better or it just sort of seems like it's similar to the ones that are in the player's handbook. So with me having 15 domains, or I'm sorry, with me having 30 domains, that means I'm going to have 15 gods of two domains each. And the way that I did that, I just made a simple table, 1 through 30, and I rolled two D30 dice. And if you don't have a D30, you can actually go online and find a random D30 to roll. I think the Dungeons and Dragons uh, website has a you know, bunch of dice that you can go on there. But you roll the, the, roll the d30 twice, come up with two domains for each god. If they, you already roll a number that you rolled before, you can go up or down on the table, whatever's closest or whichever you choose, and that you know the closest one is the result you'll get. So if you rolled an 8 and you already picked 8, you know, maybe you'll get down to 7 or up to 9, and you just keep going until you get to the next domain. So basically you're just going to scratch these off as you take them. That way the gods don't have too much of overlap. Uh, some of the domains themselves have a little bit of overlap. Uh, maybe trade and um, travel have a little bit of overlap, destruction and war, you know, uh, so on and so forth. So there already is a little bit of overlap in there with the special abilities and the spells that they can cast. So I wasn't too worried about that, but I figured, you know, 15 gods of two domains each, that could be pretty fun. Um, or you could also do, if you want to do uh, something a little bit different, you could do 10 gods with three domains each, and uh, you know maybe some gods only have one domain if you want to have them more specialized. But really, it's just a table to do whatever you want with. I'm going to put it down below. It's just really just a list of the domains that I have up on YouTube and on my blog and uh, the links for the PDF. So yeah, I'm going to have to put a lot of links down there to, for, for you guys to get to everything. But, but that was what I came up with, and I'll show you guys a little bit of what I rolled up and what I'm going to start working on. So I did exactly what I just told you guys about. I got my little table. I rolled two D30s for each god, and this is the results that I got. So for the first deity, if I can find the right, uh, right file here, <laughs> I rolled 9 and 22, and I got fate and stars. And, uh, you know, that's kind of funny that those two kind of popped up together, but that's that's how, you know, random dice rules happen sometimes. The next is war and animals. And I thought that was kind of a unique combination. I don't think that's something that I would have came up with myself. But uh, the god of war is also has some animalistic qualities to them. So maybe he he's like a bear or a wolf or something like that. Um, just uh, So he's sort of like a naturalistic uh, god of war, uh, you know, maybe even competition. So, you know, these are sort of just... Uh, broad bro uh, brush strokes that I'm using at first here. And I like that it's random because there's some things that I would have put together and other things I would have never put together, like like war and animals. I don't, I don't know if I would have done that. So that's kind of cool how it turned out. Same with this next one. Uh, it rolled 17 and 28. Nature and trickery. So, you know, your trickster god, you know, natural world. I guess maybe that, that, that makes a little bit of sense with like some of the uh, Native American beliefs and so forth. But uh, yeah, nature and trickery, I think that's kind of cool. The next is light and crafts. So I'm kind of fig figuring this is the god of the sun, uh, you know, god of, uh, you know, mankind or, uh, you know, craftsmen, things like that. Just, uh, you know, the fire of the sun and uh, keeping the forge lit, uh, that sort of thing. So I thought that was kind of neat. The next was 13 and 20. Uh, 20. 
uh, life and revenge. And these are sort of almost like uh, polar opposites, I thought, maybe. Uh, but maybe not. You know, Maybe you revere life to the extent that you're willing to uh, track down its, uh, its destroyers and uh, take vengeance on them. So I thought that was kind of a cool combination. And here's another one that's unique. Plants and fire. You know, you would kind of think that trees and fire should be like complete opposites of one another. And yet they're kind of jammed into one uh, deity. So maybe this, uh, you know, maybe it's just it shows that, that life cycle of trees burning and then growing up from seeds. You know, especially in like, uh, like Yellowstone National Park, I, I've heard that, it you know, when the flames come through, it devastates stuff. But that flame is needed to... Uh, burn the pine cones, get the seeds all figured out, and, uh, you know, it just works better that way. So, I don't know. It's kind of a cool concept there. The next is earth and knowledge, and uh, that kind of makes sense. You know, the, the earth is old, the, the, the dirt, the stones, um, they've been around for a while, so they probably you know, soaked in some knowledge. Um, the next is trade and strength. So, uh, so a strong god that also reveres coin and civilization and... Um, you know, the transportation of goods across kingdom lines, you know, whatever you want to do there. But trade and strength. The next is suffering and slime. And I think slime is one of my favorite domains that I came up with. Uh, and these two, I would have put suffering and slime together. Those two seem to fit pretty well. Um, the suffering domain, I had people, the clerics, cutting into themselves and slime they exude you know, cubic feet of slime. So, uh, you know, I, I know you can't really combine uh, domains, but uh, that'd be kind of funny if you had a, a cleric that was cutting himself and then exuding slime from the wounds. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, that's going to be an interesting deity to work on. The next is uh, pretty standard, death and darkness. You know, ooh, it's a big bad evil guy. Uh, yeah, <laughs> God hanging out uh, wherever you go when you die. It's dark down there. <laughs> the next is destruction and water. And I think these fit pretty well together you know you think of uh, tsunamis and waves and storms but you know this isn't really a god of storms but i can see this god and the god of tempest getting along pretty well and i've always liked water deities maybe that's because of the silmarillion and reading all of uh you know tolkien stories about the the god of water who really pays attention to the mortals even when the rest of the gods forsake them or forsook them uh, the next is illusions and charm and this Seems like it goes pretty well together. Uh, you know, you charm them, you 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 do uh, you dupe them with their sight as well as uh, you know your, your words that you say. Uh, kind of a tricky, slippery god to to deal with, I'm sure. The next is protection and tempest. So this is interesting. So I kind of picture a god of the waves, a god of the storms, but you know, it's it's not water isn't in there, but I still picture that. Uh, so a lot of sailors perhaps pray to the god of the water and probably the god of the storms and you know that protection shows a little bit of perhaps empathy that this god has that yes even though he brings the storms about maybe the faithful are the ones that get through those storms and the ones that don't call on him or her you know uh, sink down to the bottom so i thought that was cool moon and air again i don't know if i would have put these two together i picture a god of air maybe like a god of spirits uh, you know, God of the Moons, you know, something different, uh, you know, animalistic, uh, rare creature sort of aspect to it. But I guess the moon's in the, you know, from the ground. It looks like the moon's up in the air. So I guess that kind of makes makes sense. And the last two domains were magic and travel. And again, this is one that I wouldn't have put together. So this is why I like randomness. It it it, it spurs my creativity and it gives me some inspiration to come up for why on earth are these two together. So, you know, a god of magic, this is where the magic of the world flows from. For instance, maybe this is the source of magic, and he also seems to travel around, or he likes those that travel around. So uh, maybe the mages, um, you know, also do this. Uh, I'm, I'm guessing that, you know, those mages that worship a god probably pick this deity, and uh, maybe they travel from place to place because uh, they're, they're hunted for their abilities or, or their... Uh, they're packs with strange infernal beings that give them benefits. But uh, but yeah, that was the domain that I, or not the domain, that was the pantheon that I pretty much came up with uh, randomly. And I'm going to try to find maybe an old dead language and look for one that has a lot, lots of words to try to describe the names of these gods. Uh, maybe I could just just spin off of those words and you know make them sound a little bit more uh, fantasy sounding perhaps. Um, 
I used to use Sumerian for a lot of naming conventions in, in the setting, but I've used Sumerian so much that I feel like I need to do something different. So if there's any sort of dead language out there that you're familiar with and you know of a good website or uh, you know uh, just a good place to find words for that language, just let me know in the comments below. I'd love to hear them, see what you guys think. But yeah, this is going to be my 5th edition uh, Pantheon. I'm going to try to, to work on this in the the time that I have uh, when my uh, little little child is born here and you know it's sleeping and I'm trying to somehow watch my son but yeah I'm guessing that my video production uh, quantity is gonna slow down here uh, gotta be a father and a family man and my wife is gonna be off from work for about eight I think to ten weeks depending on how much time her, her job gives her so don't expect a lot of videos from me but I'm not going around I'm not going away or anything so uh, I'll still be here tinkering on RPG stuff in in the shadows of YouTube, <laughs> and when I can poke my head up above water, I'll make sure to tell you guys what I've done, what I've come up with, and uh, and just one final thing out there: don't be afraid to do your own thing, make your own stuff. Uh, all these domains that I made were homebrewed brainstorms, basically. Um, so, yeah, feel free to twist them, turn them. You got the lame parts and add in cool parts and uh, yeah if you do any of that stuff and you, you actually use any of these domains and they're fun uh, please let me know if you end up using this pantheon you know do that as well and I'm gonna put a PDF down below a link for it so that you can just really just roll 2d 30s and do the same thing I did and see what kind of pantheon you came up with and if you do that just uh, tell me what it's what it's like and uh, tell tell me if you think it's cool or if, Oh, wow, that was a really crappy dice roll, and I, I hate this Pantheon. <laughs> you can always just roll it again. But uh, all right, everyone, this is Tim, and I will hopefully see you sooner rather than later. All right, bye.